Welcome back to P1 IMSA Tutorials. In this video, we're going to talk about how the box and whisker plots were derived. Those are the things that you see here. We took a slice of it and pasted that image over here on the right-hand side here for sector 06 uh, of a particular race. The data set that we used in order to create that plot is here on the left-hand side. We took laps 1 through 34 of a particular car and looked at the sector six times. Uh, this diagram, by the way, is taken from the user's guide, so uh, you can refer to that um, for a transcription of this. Uh, we then take, uh, oh, well, sorry. We first see that there's some of these times are really out of whack, right? Because they probably represent yellow flags or, or whatever. So what we observe is that our times were about uh, 148 or so, and I've decided that I'm going to whack off the um, times that are greater than 153 uh, using the P1M's uh, configuration settings there. And so we strike out this 205 lap, etc. So those times are struck out. So then we're left with, it turns out to be 19 laps, which we then transcribe the sector six times, uh, 5860, into this cell of a spreadsheet, the 5955, into this cell, 5964, the cell, etc. And we see that we have um, 19 uh, laps that we're going to consider in our data set. We then take those times and we sort them. So the fastest time then would be a 5860 down to a 6093. So that's just a rearrangement, a sorting of the numbers that you saw in column A. Um, then we had converted the, uh, those times um, into their corresponding average miles per hour. And that calculation was done by no, us knowing that the um, particular sectors are of a particular length and then uh, dividing it by the time in order to get these, these uh, mile, average miles per hour numbers here. Okay, now the statistics part comes in. Um, and uh, this is part of a branch of math known as descriptive statistics, box and whisker plots. Uh, we take the median, and if the median, if you recall from um, math back in when you were taking math, um, is also known as the midpoint. So what we do is we take a look at these 19 uh, values and find what's in the middle. So that would be the 10th value, which is this, the 163220, the median. It's also known as quartile 2 because there's uh, four, four there, you'll see that there's going to be four partitionings here. Um, and the way we find the lower partitioning is of the numbers here, or of the number of values here, 11 through 20, we find the one in the middle, uh, the midpoint there, and that count, uh, that's known as Q1. And likewise, we find Q3 by looking at the uh, set of numbers above there. Again, we're not doing averages or anything. We're just finding the, the middle number, the midpoint. So this box between Q1 and Q3 um, is known as the interquartile range. So that represents half of all the numbers that you have. And that corresponds to this blue box over here, where the middle of the blue pop box is the median, that line over there. And the top of the box is the Q3 value, and the bottom of the box is the Q1 value. So that sort of represents, represents the meat of the uh, data that we're looking at. Okay, now we talked about an IQR was defined to be sort of the height of this box, Q3 minus Q1, in which case it's 1.706. Um, to find uh, sort of statistically what the outliers are, um, the 1.5 factor is frequently used. So we take 1.5 times IQR uh, yields uh, 2.559. So what we do then to find the whiskers, which shows you where the outliers are, they, they exist beyond the whiskers, is we take 1.5 times IQR um, and apply it to Q1 beneath it. So that would be Q1 minus 1.5 IQR is a 160.197, and the extent above it, you take Q3 at 1.5 IQR is 167.021. So we see that the extent of our whisker here would be 
a 1.66033 because that falls within uh, 1.5 IQR. And likewise, the bottom extent is 162.240. That's the last number that is above 160197. So that's how we draw our whiskers here. And then anything beyond those whiskers are the outliers, of which in this data set, there's only one. There's a 159684. So that's the outlier that we paint down here. Uh, so now that you understand how the box plot is created, compare the box plot graphic with a set of data that we had to stare at in order to sort of come to this quick visualization of what, what, what the data set is. Well, that's it. Now, now you've learned about uh, what a box plot, box and whisker plot is. Thanks for viewing.